time, huh? Seriously, come on. Who doesn't know what time is? I bet you're raising an eyebrow right now, aren't you? So, spill it. What's the deal with time? If you're a pro at Googling, you could snatch the answer in a flash. But here's the kicker. Are you cool with that answer? I mean, are those Google search results satisfying you? If you're like, yeah, that's all I need, then maybe you shouldn't waste another tick of your clock watching this vid. But hey, if you're up for something more profound, buckle in, because we're diving headfirst into the ultimate question, what's time? Although humans do not know exactly what time is, we can sense its flow through the progression of events and phenomena. Once upon a time, by observing events that repeat themselves in natural cycles due to the movement of the moon and the sun, and the changing seasons of the year, man created the first calendars. But then, civilizations started leveling up. We needed more precise timekeepers. That's when the clever minds of old came up with sundials, water clocks, hourglasses, pendulum clocks, and even fancy mechanical ones. However, the accuracy of mechanical watches still cannot fully satisfy humans. So along came electronic watches. Electronic watches that measure time from the vibrations of quartz crystals provide dozens of times more accuracy than those powered by mainsprings and gears. Using the same principle, the atomic clock counts the number of oscillations of cesium-133 atoms and converts it to time at the rate of one second for every 9,192,631,770 oscillations, yielding an error of just one second every 30 million years. But here's the curveball. Even though we're clocking time with jaw-dropping precision, we're still scratching our heads over if time exists. At first, the answer seems obvious. Of course time exists. It constantly unfolds all around us, and it's hard to imagine the universe without it. Time can be defined as a continuum of existence and events occurring in a clear, irreversible order from the past through the present to the future. According to this definition, time is like a flowing river, an arrow shot from the past, through the present, and into the future. Classical mechanics coined by Isaac Newton and preceded by Galileo Galilei proposed that time is a fully measurable one-dimensional quantity that moves forward without any stopping or speed change in any situation, distinct from space. You can't physically touch time, but you know of its existence and you can measure its different intervals. In reality, light doesn't experience time. Imagine placing a light bulb in a position directly opposite to the sun, across the center of the Earth. You switch on the light bulb and start a stopwatch on your wrist. After 8 minutes and 20 seconds, you see the light shine. For you, 8 minutes and 20 seconds have passed, but for the beams of light emitted from the bulb, it's 0 seconds. Similarly, you can hop into a spacecraft and zoom off into space at 99.99% of the speed of light. At this speed, your one year would be equivalent to 70.7 years back on Earth. Moreover, time also slows down when you're near a massive object, like Earth for instance. The greater the mass of an object, the more it slows down time. If you were aboard a spacecraft flying really close to a black hole with a mass a thousand times that of the sun, every day that passes for you would correspond to eight days on Earth. Not to mention, even closer to the Earth's core, time slows down more due to increased mass concentration. Consequently, it ages less than the rock on the planet's surface by about 2.5 years after existing for 4.5 billion years. Imagine if you had two incredibly precise clocks, one mounted on your head, another at your feet, and at the end of your life you check them, and the one on your head would be a few dozen nanoseconds ahead. Einstein dubbed this time dilation, and it's essentially how you could travel through time to the future. But there's a big question it didn't fully resolve. Why is it we can move through space in any direction, but through time in only one? No matter what we do, the past is always behind us. This is called the arrow of time. Whether it flows slowly or swiftly, 
stretches or remains constant. Time always proceeds forward from the past, through the present, to the future, without the possibility of reversing course. There's no U-turn, no rewinding. That dreamy idea of hopping back into history sounds cool, but it's just not happening. And it's the second law of thermodynamics. For those seeking simplicity, the second law of dynamics states that our universe is a closed system, and within a closed system, a level of chaos can only stay the same or increase. Ice placed on a table will melt into water, but that water on the table won't solidify back into the original ice form. A deflated tire might expand and regain its shape, but air won't obediently rush back in to inflate it as if by magic. Dropping a red-hot iron rod into a bucket of water heats the water up while cooling the iron. Conversely, hot water in the bucket will cool down, but the iron won't regain its red-hot state. In those three examples above, the ice, the inflated tire, and the red-hot iron represent a low level of chaos. Think of it as minimal chaos when energy is concentrated. In those cases, energy concentrates within three objects – the chilled ice, the tire, and the iron. Conversely, when things get messy and chaotic, energy spreads out and scatters. It's like the energy that was once in the ice now spreads out into the water. The energy from the tire scatters into the air, and the heat energy from the iron spreads all around inside the water in the bucket. On a larger scale, the demise of a star resulting in a supernova explosion serves as a prime illustration of increasing chaos, also known as entropy within the universe. The universe sprang from an infinitely minuscule point, representing both the highest energy concentration and the lowest state of chaos the universe has ever experienced. Today, the universe expands at an accelerating rate. As it expands, energy within the universe becomes more diffused and scattered. As we discussed earlier, this translates to heightened entropy on the cosmic scale. Entropy only progresses in one direction, upwards, implying that no natural process can be reversed. Hence, the current of time cannot be rewound either. So, if time is such a fundamental property, it should be in our most fundamental equations describing the universe, right? Currently, we have two sets of equations that govern physics. General relativity describes the behavior of very large things, while quantum physics explains the very small. One of the biggest goals in theoretical physics over the last half century has been reconciling the two into one fundamental theory of everything. There have been many attempts, none yet proven, and they treat time in different ways. Systems in our universe move from order to disorder, and it is that property of the universe that defines the direction of time's arrow. Oddly enough, one contender called the wheeler dewitt equation doesn't include time at all. Like all current theories of everything, that equation is speculative. But as a thought experiment, if it or a similarly time-starved equation turned out to be true, would that mean that time doesn't exist at the most fundamental level? Could time just be some sort of illusion generated by the limitations of the way we perceive the universe? We don't yet know, but maybe that's the wrong way of thinking about it. Instead of asking if time exists as a fundamental property, maybe it could exist as an emergent one. Emergent properties are things that don't exist in individual pieces of a system, but do exist for the system as a whole. Each individual water molecule doesn't have a tide, but the whole ocean does. A movie creates change through time by using a series of still images that appear to have fluid, continuous change between them. Flipping through the images fast enough, our brains perceive the passage of time from the sequence of still images. No individual frame of the movie changes or contains the passage of time, but it's a property that comes out of how the pieces are strung together. The movement is real, yet also an illusion. Could the physics of time somehow be a similar illusion? Physicists are still exploring these and other questions, so we're far from a complete explanation. At least, not yet.